welcome to Crime Cafe. I'm Kristen Quinn and today's video is going to be about Marlena Choa. I want to give a big disclaimer for this video because it is gruesome. It is just downright terrible what happened to her and what happened to her unborn child. This is going to talk about a young pregnant woman who was befriended by someone and she trusted this person and this person set her up to ultimately take her child that was the plan um so this does get pretty gruesome and i just want to give a big disclaimer out there for that if this isn't something that you can watch i completely understand um, I will see you in another video. With all that being said, go grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea or whatever it is you want to drink. Sit back, relax, and let's dive in. Marlena Choa was born on November 16th, 1999. Her family was originally from Mexico and her father immigrated to the United States to prepare a new beginning for his family. Once he put down some roots, he went back and got his wife and took her back to the US and had to leave Marlene in Mexico for another five to six months till it was completely safe to bring her back to the United States to be with him and his wife. The family settled down in Chicago and Marlene was described as just a joyful, cheerful, always laughing. She was very popular. She had a lot of friends. She made friends easily. People just took to her. She was absolutely gorgeous and she was just a very, very social person. When she got to the United States, she knew that she wanted to do well in her studies. She had a plan. She wanted to make something of herself. She wanted to be successful because of what her parents did for her to, to give her a better life. And she wanted to pay them back by living her life to the fullest. So she was very focused on her school and she had a big plan to become a fashion designer. That's what she really, really wanted to do. At just 15 years old, she met a boy named Giovanni and they completely fell in love. They were just head over heels in love with each other and they knew that that was it for them. They wanted each other for the rest of their lives and they got married. Just a year later, she had her first baby and his name was Joshua. Although Marlene was very young, she was so excited to start her family. She was so happy and so was Giovanni and they were just so happy with the life that they were creating with each other. She did not want to give up on school. She still had her dreams, she still had her goals, and she wanted to make her parents proud and do well with that. She did decide to finish high school and she would put Joshua in a daycare while she was in school. Three years after Joshua was born, Marlon was 19 years old and she got pregnant with her second baby. They were super excited about and adding to their family, but she was, pretty nervous about the additional responsibility. She was still finishing school. She did have Joshua and she was trying to do her best. So she was a little bit worried on how she was going to manage it all, but she knew that she could no matter what. She was excited and very happy to be adding to their family. So Marlene joined a Facebook group that she wanted to find support. She wanted to find other mothers who were maybe in the same or similar situation that she was in and just to hear that, you know, she's doing a good job and she could she could handle it all. The moms in the Facebook group also gave each other free baby items or items at a really low cost that they were gonna get rid of anyway and they just really tried to help one another out. It was a great supportive community for any type of mom. In that same Facebook group was Clarissa Figueroa. She was a 46 year old woman and she had a 25 year old daughter Desiree and a 20 year old son Xander. Now she lost Xander in 2018 to natural causes. I'm not exactly sure what he passed away from but it completely broke her. It devastated her to lose her baby like that. She just really struggled with accepting that he was gone. It was in October of 2018 when Clarissa told her family that she was pregnant with her boyfriend's baby. This came as a shock to everyone. Her 25 year old daughter Desiree did have some questions about how this could be possible because her mom did have her tubes tied. So she 
wasn't quite sure how it happened, but also didn't make a big fuss about it. Throughout the rest of the year 2018, Clarissa was all over Facebook, all over her social medias, and she was posting about being pregnant, how excited she was to bring another baby into the world, and sharing ultrasound pictures, all the things. She shared his room, the crib that she had for him, and she was just extremely excited about bringing a son into the world. After such a hard year with losing her son Xander, she was very excited to be bringing another baby boy into her life. So in February, Clarissa joined the same Facebook group that Marlon was in. It was called Help a Sister Out. It was on March, like a month after being in the group, that she made a post asking, who is due in May? Where is the May mom is at? And Marlon replied that she was due in May. So later on, Marlon posted in that same Facebook group asking if anyone was getting rid of any baby clothes or selling their baby items or anything like that. And Clarissa replied that she had some, but she was located in Chicago. Marlon asked her where she was located and Clarissa said, just message me privately and we will figure everything out. So Marlon messaged her and they talked about where they could meet up to get the baby clothes and baby items. And Clarissa told Marlon to just meet her at her house on April 1st. So before all this, Clarissa did have a conversation with her 25 year old daughter, Desiree, about how she needed help to find a pregnant woman. She needed help to kill the pregnant woman and she needed help to cut the baby out of the, her belly and carry on like the baby was her own. Desiree went along with her mom. She did tell her boyfriend what her mom had said and her boyfriend was kind of was just like that's insane. If anything happens to someone I'm going to the police like this has to be a joke right like this isn't serious. April 1st comes Marlon takes off to Clarissa's house to go get the baby items. At the house was Clarissa, Clarissa's daughter Desiree, and Desiree's boyfriend. Now, they were all hanging out in the basement. That's where she had the storage of baby stuff, and they were all in that room. The boyfriend states that Desiree and her mom, Clarissa, were acting extremely weird. They were whispering, they would move from room to room and kind of be like together off to the side and just being super sketchy. And he said that Desiree was shaky and just really fidgety and he was starting to get really worried and he told Desiree if anything happened I will call the police and he told Desiree like this has to be an April Fool's joke or something this isn't really gonna happen so Clarissa gives Merlin the baby items and she left nothing happened that day they just put it off like it was an April Fool's joke they were just kidding it was they weren't really gonna do anything but during this transition Clarissa made the birds are really loud you know contact with Marlene they met in person she was able to get clothes and baby items from her with no difficulty their houses weren't very far from each other and so now she built some trust there is some trust there. But when Marlon went through her baby stuff and saw some things that she still needed, she reached out to Clarissa and asked if she had any more of these items that she needed. And Clarissa said, yes, I do. Of course, you can come over and have them. But it was Tuesday, April 23rd, 2019. Marlon gets out of school and she has to go pick up her son Joshua from daycare. But before getting to his daycare, she figured she would stop at Clarissa's house. It was about four to six miles away from her home. So she just wanted to stop there quick, pick up the items that she was gonna be given, and then go pick up her son from daycare. Later on that day, Yolani, Marlon's husband, gets a call from Joshua's daycare saying that Marlon never showed up to pick him up and that he needed to come get his son. Immediately, Yolani thought something had to happen. She was pregnant, she was due really soon. So he thought maybe she went into labor early, maybe something happened, she got in an accident and she's at the hospital and she couldn't contact me. Maybe her phone's broke. Like he, his mind was racing. He thought that something had happened to his wife and her and his baby. Giovanni calls her parents and they didn't talk to her all day. So now the entire family is 
panicking, they're freaking out. They called all of the hospitals around the area and she wasn't in any of them. Eventually their mind wandered to maybe she was kidnapped, maybe something like that happened to her. They even let themselves think that maybe Yovani did something to her. That was really hard for Yovani to hear. They were having some trouble in their relationship, but it completely broke his heart to hear that his family would think that he would do something to the love of his life and his unborn child. Giovanni went straight to the police and he reported her missing. They told him to give it 24 hours and to see if she comes back. So Giovanni goes back the next day and once again reports her missing, says that he hasn't talked to her in over 24 hours now and he wants his wife found. Her family did get very frustrated with the police because they, they didn't like the pace that the police were moving at. And that has to be extremely frustrating for families. You, I can't even imagine not knowing where your loved one is and somebody, first somebody makes you wait 24 hours when you know there is absolutely no way that that loved one would go that long without talking to you. So you know something is wrong, but no one will do anything about it. Marlon's family hired a private investigator to do the work that the police weren't doing. The investigator spoke Spanish and he worked for 36 hours straight to try to find Marlon. The investigator went through all of her social media accounts and that's when he saw that she was a part of this Facebook group and she met Clarissa and she had plans in private messages to meet Clarissa at her house to pick up these baby items. A private investigator gathers up all this, all this information and takes it to the police and, you know, tells them this is where she was supposed to go. This is where she last was. And they completely ignore him. They told him that they would look into it, but they didn't. It was May 14th, 2019. This was three weeks after Marlene was reported missing. Her body was found in a garbage bag outside of Clarissa's home. What I'm gonna be talking about next is very graphic. I will be talking about the details of what happened to Marlin and um, just wanna give a little disclaimer there. So it was on April 23rd, 2019, backtrack a little bit, that day that Marlin was leaving school, going to stop at Clarissa's before she picked up her son, Joshua. She went to Clarissa's house to pick up clothes and baby items. Of course, she felt comfortable going there. She's been talking to Clarissa. She went there before. She got items from her before. She's nice to her. Of course, she felt comfortable because Clarissa groomed her to feel comfortable. So Marlene goes in and takes a seat in the living room. That's when Clarissa and Desiree go into the kitchen to gather up the baby clothes and items for her. So uh, really, they're talking about their plan of what, what's going to happen next. Clarissa tells Desiree that she plans on strangling Marlin, making her pass out. And once she's gone, they are going to cut the baby out with a butcher knife. And, you know, her and, and Clarissa's boyfriend will raise the baby like their own. So Desiree's part was to go back into the living room and distract Marlin by showing her a photo album of her brother that passed away, Xander. And Marlin was being sweet and attentive to the photo album that Desiree was showing her and paying attention to her while Clarissa came up from behind and put a wire around her neck. Marlene fought like the fighter that she was and she tried to get her fingers through the wire and um, she was doing a good job um, and Clarissa had to yell at her daughter Desiree for not doing her job correctly and Desiree then had to come and pry Marlon's fingers out from underneath the wire so um, her mom could have the upper hand and they ended up on the floor and this was when Clarissa was able to get on top of Marlon and continue to uh, um, strangle her and Marlon realized that she didn't have much fight left in her. It was about five minutes of fighting at this point. She looked over to the side and she saw the family dog sitting there and she pet his nose and she passed away. Clarissa said that 
she knew 100% that she was gone because she looked up on Google how to know when someone um, is dead from strangulation and it, they usually urinate on themselves and then they're gone. So she knew that Marlon was gone because that had happened to her. Desiree goes and gets the butcher knife, a plastic bag, and a blanket and comes back into the living room. Larissa cuts Marlon's abdomen and takes out the baby and the placenta and the umbilical cord and sticks everything in a bucket. They then wrapped Marlon in a garbage bag and they took her out into the backyard and put her in a garbage can. Larissa then calls 911 right after they hid Marlon in, in the backyard and says that she just gave birth to her baby at home and he isn't breathing and she needs help ASAP. So an ambulance arrives and they see Clarissa standing outside and she has the baby who looks completely blue, clearly didn't get any oxygen yet at all. They take them both to the hospital and the baby was in a serious critical condition. They put him in the NICU and they take Clarissa into a different room to examine her and make sure that she's okay, everything's all right with her. Clarissa had blood all over her. She had blood all over her arms, all over her shirt, and but the, they just figured that it was hers. You know, she gave birth at home and it was a traumatic birth and they just figured that it was her blood. When they examined her, they realized that her body did not just give birth. Her body was not, it didn't even look like she was, you know, had been pregnant. Um, and this is the part that baffles me. I just, I don't understand why they wouldn't question like, well, your body doesn't look like it just went through labor, an extreme labor, you have blood all over you and you're not bleeding. So they let her go they cleaned her up helped helped clean her up clean the blood off of her and they let her go into the NICU with the baby and then and like didn't call the police or anything like that which like that's so odd to me I don't understand I don't understand how I mean maybe maybe people questioned it but it wasn't protocol I'm not sure I would certainly question that that's not normal. So Clarissa went into the NICU and she was told that the baby did have severe brain damage and he was on life support. She immediately named him Xander, which if you remember, that was the name of her son that passed away the previous year. She then starts to post pictures of her and her baby and her boyfriend posts pictures of the baby and they're all asking for prayers and um, set up a GoFundMe for the medical bills and they tell their story and they tell the baby's story and how he needs, you know, all the help they can give. And they actually get about $10,000 in a uh, GoFundMe proceeds. And, but I'm not sure where, where that money went. So while Clarissa is in the hospital pretending to be this baby boy's mother, Desiree is back home trying to clean up the mess they created. Desiree takes Marlon's car and drives it over to her sister's house and she is caught on video doing that. She throws Marlon's phone out of the car window even though Marlon's phone is pinged last place at Clarissa's house and during all this time Marlon's family are they're still trying to find her they have no idea what happened to her the private investigator went and showed the police this Facebook group and you know the conversations and this is where she is supposed to be and they didn't listen they didn't do anything about it it wasn't until one of Marlon's friends went and physically showed the police the conversations between Marlon and Clarissa and that this is where she in fact was supposed to go and showed all the evidence and put it in their face and that is when they listened. The police went to Clarissa's home to talk to her and when they knocked on the door, Desiree was the one who answered. She was asked some questions, asked if she knew who Marlon was and where her mother was. She told them that her mom wasn't there, her mom had just given birth to her little boy and she is at the hospital. She also said that they had no idea who Marlon was. Of course, the police were suspicious. So they did take a DNA sample from Yolvani, a sample from the baby in the NICU that was with Clarissa. The results, of course, came back that the baby was his and 
It was at this point that Clarissa and her boyfriend were able to pretend to be the baby's parents for about a month, like three to four weeks. They were able to um, collect money off of people, show his face all over the internet, just act like that was their story and they did nothing wrong and um, get pity from people, all the things. Yeah, that was about a month, a month that they were able to do that. It was May 14th, 2019, when the police conducted a search of Clarissa's home. When they showed up, they were met by Clarissa's boyfriend, who was in the yard, and he was cleaning off a rug with some bleach. So he dropped the rug and went inside the house. They found some specks of blood throughout the house, and they went in the backyard, and that is when they found... Marlon's body. Marlon still had the cord around her neck. So she was in that garbage bin for like a month. Um, the police notify Marlon's family. And of course, you know, they need someone to go and confirm that it, it truly is her. And they did, but the family was so angry because it was a month that they knew that that's where she was. Their private investigator did the work they knew exactly where they could find her, potentially find her, and no one looked into it. So her baby was in the hospital without his family for a month, and she was stuck in this garbage can for a month. Police arrested Clarissa, Desiree, and Clarissa's boyfriend. Desiree confesses to everything and tells them the entire story. Marlon's family and Giovanni tried to focus all of their time and energy on the baby boy. He was in serious critical condition. He didn't have any brain activity. He went far too long without any oxygen. He was on life support. They did name the baby Giovanni, but it was on June 14th, 2019. The family made the decision to take him off of life support. Clarissa and Desiree were charged with first degree murder, aggravated kidnapping, dismembering a human body, and concealing a homicidal death. And Clarissa's boyfriend was charged with tampering with evidence. Clarissa and Desiree were charged for the baby's death when that happened as well. All three of them pled not guilty. And it was in November of 2019, Desiree actually gave birth to her own baby in jail. In an interview with Marlon's parents, they were asked, what kind of punishment do you want for Clarissa and Desiree, the people who took your daughter away from you and the world. Marlon's mom said that she didn't want the death penalty because she wants them to suffer in jail for the rest of their lives. The family did have a GoFundMe. All the money that they raised was going to Marlon's son. Do a memorial project. Three times a year, they volunteer at a church. They give out free diapers and other items that moms may need or parents may need. It's a safe place for women to go and get some help that they need. And they are also trying to pass a law called Marlin's Law, which would require a DNA test and to show your photo ID if you come to the hospital after giving birth to your child at home. So you give, child, you give, give birth to your child at home, you come to the hospital and say you just gave birth, you have to prove that that child is yours. That's all I have on Marlon's case and it is completely heartbreaking. It's it's one of the most devastating cases. Um, I can't, I really, I can't even imagine. You just wanna get some stuff for your baby. You know how exciting it is. An exciting time and you're trying to get everything set up and and just, be happy. She was trying so hard to be successful in her life. She had a son and had him in daycare and she would go to school and try to do well in school to be successful and have a successful life for her and her children. And, you know, she was doing all the things and um, to just be like taken like that for no reason at all. It's terrible. 
Let me know what you think of Marlon's case down in the comments below. If you have any case suggestions, you can always leave them in the comments below, but I did make a form that you can fill out and I will leave that in the description box. And it'll just, it's very simple, two questions, and it will um, be sent to me after you fill it out. So be sure to do that if you have any cases that you would like covered. And like always, thank you so much for giving me your time.